All right, I know this is really weird. Uh, it's weird for me as well, but here we are and welcome to Chemistry 2201. Uh, I'll be teaching the electric component of the course. So yeah, just to give you a sense of, you know, what I'm seeing on my side, uh, this is this is this is you, I guess. I kind of need a little bit of a uh, of an audience here and and I did find it strange to to stare in front of a webcam, so now I have a face to say hi to. Hi everybody. So the purpose of this video is basically just to give you a rundown of the course. Now, of course, you do have the syllabus and pretty much all the information that's contained in this video is in the syllabus. So feel free to take a good look at that. So I won't be teaching this alone. Uh, we have a great team here. So I haven't put the, the teaching assistants on top of that, uh, but just to sort of say a quick hello to these people here. Dr. Rory Chisholm will be teaching the, the lab components. I'm not going to be really talking about the lab in this particular video. Uh, Rory has prepared a, an introductory video uh, on the lab portion of the Brightspace site as well. Jessica Nickerson is a graduate student in, in my research group. Uh, she'll actually be working with you through tutorials as well as one-on-one -on -one help sessions. Dr. Peter Wenzel actually has taught this course for many years. He's co-authored the textbook. Well, he's actually pre-recorded a lot of, of exercise videos that help you through the practice problems. You'll also meet him in the tutorials and one-on-one -on -one help sessions. So the textbook. I do have a physical copy here. So this is what the book looks like. Um, we also have the book available electronically, so you can download that book from Brightspace. This is the exact same version. If you want a paper copy, you can have this ordered through the bookstore. It's a pretty big book, so it's like 30 bucks or so to get it printed out. They'll ship it to you, I believe, so you just have to allow a few days for that to happen. Uh, but the digital copy is available for free. It's the exact same content the whole way through. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to go through this textbook. I mean, basically, I could just walk away and just say, read the book, and you'd have everything that you need to know. There's practice problems in the book, and those practice problems are really going to make up the core of this class. So I'll get into that in a second when we talk about the quizzes. So the way the class is organized is essentially on a week-by-week -week basis. So you can see here that we've got in the syllabus, every one of the weeks has like one or two chapters associated with it. We also have midterms and weekly quizzes that, that go along with that material. So you really have to take this course one week at a time, and it's really important that you keep up with the material week by week. So that's one of the disadvantages, but perhaps advantages in terms of keeping your own schedule. You get to decide when you want to watch these videos, when you want to do these problems, but make sure that you're doing them every single week. And the, the quizzes are going to be there to motivate you to make sure that you do that as well. So the course has two Brightspace sites. I'm just showing you here the lecture component. Uh, there is a separate one associated with the lab. The content you'll see is also organized on a week by week basis. So within these pages, you will see uh, a quick summary of the problems that you want to go through. I'll post PowerPoint slides and the lecture videos as well, plus tutorials and everything else that you might need to, to succeed. So this is just a quick breakdown of how you're going to be graded in the class. You will have labs, but of course the labs are not going to be the same as being there physically in person. But we think that we have a lot of things that we can say and do uh, when it comes to online virtual labs. The labs are a direct complement to each week's worth of material. You're going to be having weekly quizzes. So the quizzes will be based on the practice problems that are in the textbook, which I'll show you in a second. Midterms and a final exam. There's going to be three midterms and a final exam. And I should say that these will be open book. So they're individual, of course, but they are open book. Uh, basically, we're just going to be emailing you or, or posting on Brightspace uh, a Word document that is your test or your final exam. Um, you can print that out or you can complete it electronically and then upload the material back to us. So you'll be doing the midterms from home, um, kind of honor system thing. Nobody's going to be supervised or anything like that. So it's on you to, to get these things done. All right, let's talk about Kappa. If you've done first year chemistry at Dow, you're already familiar with this with this server. But if not, it's basically a computer program that, that you can host questions. The nice thing about it is that you get to redo your questions over and over. So if you don't get it right the first time, you get another shot at it. The quizzes themselves will be based on one question, one single question exactly from the practice problems in your book. So let's actually take an example here. Uh, the Brightspace site showed you how to get access to the course, um, and I'm just logging in, in into mine. So this question is, is coming from the first set of questions from the first, first from the first quiz, and it's asking you to calculate the mean 
and something called a confidence interval. Um, we'll get to what a confidence interval means, but in terms of mean, I think the easiest way is just you know plug it into Excel, calculate the average. And you see it comes out to be 45.7. So submitting the answer, it asks for more sig fig, so I'll put another zero in there. And the answer's wrong. Now you might say, well, maybe I typed the numbers in wrong into Excel, but I know I didn't. Um, so there's another issue here. The problem is that right there, that 47.5, that number is a little bit out of the range of everything else. It's actually an outlier. You can perform a statistical test to prove that. And we have to discard that number before calculating the average from the remaining. So we see that we're correct. If you've done that, then you get full value for the quiz. Now, there are a number of attempts that you can apply for each question. And if that doesn't work, then that's still OK. You get to try it again the next day. The only thing is that the following day, the question may actually be different. So as I said, each Kappa quiz is based on one question, but there are several practice problems available. So you might actually get a totally different question the following day. But the quizzes are open for 10 full days, so you have 10 tries where each one of them has its own try. You got a lot of chances, so there's no trouble to get multiple attempts at going through these things. The best way to get prepared for these quizzes is to do the practice problems. You can attempt them at any point that you feel ready, uh, and there's really no harm done because if it's wrong, you try it again the next day. So Microsoft Teams, this is the platform that we're going to be using to actually meet virtually. Um, it's like Zoom or Skype or those kinds of things. Um, it, it goes through a Dalhousie account, so it's part of the Microsoft 365 program. There actually is a video posted on Brightspace that Rory prepared that, that walks through how to get through this Brightspace site. But when we do that, we'll be meeting for tutorials, we'll be meeting for help sessions where you actually get to, you know, talk to us. In other words, you can ask a question, uh, you can share your work just as I'm, you know, showing you stuff. This way you can, you can show us your work, even if it means like holding up a piece of paper. But we can interact. Um, even though we're not in the same physical classroom, we want to make sure that we have that chance to talk with you as well. All right, so what does a typical schedule look like? Basically, every week should look pretty much the same. So just to break things down uh, one week at a time. Now, notice that the week I'm saying begins the Friday before. And the reason for that is just to make sure we'd like to post whatever material that you need. So, for example, your pre-recorded lectures, uh, the PowerPoint slides, all that information. I'll make sure it's posted by Friday afternoon of the week before. So in some cases, I'll just be trying to get these videos recorded as we go along. The textbook is available, so you, you can actually sort of peek ahead and see all of the material. If you read that book, if you do the problems, you could get through this course successfully all on your own. But we are going to make sure that you have a lot more resources than that. So for example, the tutorials, here's three different sessions. We will have more sessions than that available to you. And they're all optional, but come to as many or as few as you want. Hopefully, it's, it's several. Uh, even if you do feel comfortable with the material, I guarantee you there's going to be tips and things that, that will help uh, with the midterms and things like that. The administrative appointments, they're kind of like office hours. So in other words, this isn't the place where you would come for extra content help. So help with the practice problems, for example. It's, it's when you have like, I don't know, let's say you missed a midterm and you want us to reschedule or figure out how that's going to affect your, your grade distribution. So you can meet with, with me on that. So you can schedule these through something called Microsoft Bookings, and that's explained on Brightspace as well. The lab tutorials are slightly different than the lecture tutorials in the sense that Rory will be offering them. The lecture and the lab are very closely connected to one another. You could learn from the lab or you could learn from the lecture, but we're kind of just isolating it to say, if you have questions about the lab, come to the lab tutorial. You will be having a live one-hour lab through Microsoft Team. Uh, we're going to have a lot of different times available through, from Wednesday through Friday. So basically, you'll be picking a slot, and you'll be meeting with the teaching assistant to go through live things dealing with the lab. I'm not actually even sure what they're going to look like quite yet, because it's a completely different lab program. So somewhere along that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule, you'll have a one-hour live lab. The Kappa quizzes will always open on a Thursday, and they're going to be closing on a Sunday midnight. Now, this, this says quiz two and, and quiz one. So in other words, this week will close the following Sunday, like 10 days later. So every time your Kappa quizzes, you will have 10 days to work through that one single problem. And finally, you have one-on-one -on -one help sessions. So you can book a time. If the tutorials are too busy, for example, you don't get to ask your question because there's too many other people. I'm not sure how many people will be there, but 
at least with the one-on-one -on -one help sessions, it's like, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. You get a chance to, to ask your question uninterrupted from anybody else. Okay, so with all the resources available to you, you could say that this class is going to be a walk in the park. Um, but I'm not going to lie to you. This is a challenging course. So just make sure that you are keeping up with the material, that you're doing these practice problems. Come to the tutorials, come to the help, make sure that you're keeping up with things. Because as I said, this class can be quite difficult. So just because it's online, it doesn't mean that we're going to make it easier for anybody. We're going to go through the same material that we always do, give or take. But as you've seen, we do have a lot of resources available to you. So hopefully with all the help that we have, um, and your own study habits will do just fine. And lastly, everything in this video and a lot more was actually in the syllabus or our policies on missing an exam, for example, uh, what the dates are, things like that. So just make sure that you have a good read at the syllabus. Send me an email if you do have any more questions um, and look forward to the year. So <laughs> I guess that's about it. And uh, we'll just leave you with a, a quick video from uh, our pet rabbit. So this is Boomer here. And uh, I guess, well, we'll see you next time.